you want to come to this party, come, th come on through. Um, it's, we did a tour in the fall that was around North America, like 42 dates in 44 days or something, and this is 48 dates in 48 days, I think, so this is just a little more ridiculous than the last one, which we thought was going to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we, we all just, it's a funny thing, like, uh, being on tour, you, you get into this rhythm of playing a show every day, and, and I, I really like it, like, the music gets like the shows get better you get better and better at playing together when you play every single night and when you get like a day off you get a day off in some like weird place like some part of Bavaria in Germany or something and we're all just like what the hell do we do with 24 hours like <laughs> we're in some small little town we're just like what do we do with this uh, time again we just need to be like we're so trained to Pavlovian response set up a drum kit and sound check and mm -hmm. whatever and it's a good it's as the shows are also, apart from the shows themselves, they're a good, like, way of stimulating other things happening, like meeting people and then going out after the show or whatever. And, uh, if, you know, if we're in just a little town with, where we don't know anybody, then having a show is a good way to, like, meet people and end up doing something interesting after the show or whatever, you know. Is that, is that exhausting, though? Because obviously, you know, um, you put on a very energetic show. There's nothing really passive about what you guys do, and I imagine 48 days of that would be, you know, tiring. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you get used to it while you're doing the shows. Like, there's never a show when I'm like, oh, I'm going to take it easy tonight because, you know, I'm pretty tired. Mm -hmm. it, that, that doesn't happen, but definitely when you get home from a tour after like that, all of a sudden you get sick with like a mil you know you the whole tour you don't have a cold or whatever and immediately you get home mm -hmm. you like get sick with various different things all at once your body just kind of like mm -hmm. the last albums I made them kind of out of started with a loop and then put another loop on top and I didn't really write music I just started recording whereas this time I wanted to kind of everything every track on the album to be a song so and to really focus on kind of the composition of kind of melodies and harmonies and stuff so yeah. I wrote all the music before I started recording, which was really, uh, I mean, I know that's that's the way most people do it, but it was really different for me because it's always just being a process of turn the computer on, get some loop that I like going, and then put more loops on top of it. Mm -hmm. This was very much like kind of consciously making every decision about the tracks, you know, this, this is going to lead into this section of the song, and then like change to this chord or whatever you know mm -hmm. do you think the the next record that you write will be you know along those lines too is that something that you want to keep up or was that sort of an interesting way to approach this record and you know you'll do whatever you want i, I, I mean i assume for well i mean follow up? yeah i'll definitely do whatever i want but i think uh the having some sort of like composition was really good for me it like you know i kind of realized the reason i wanted to do it was listening to my tracks you know that you get into it's really the loop kind of bass thing is a really easy way to do a kind of hypnotic kind of, you know, um, trance-like kind of track that just kind of keeps evolving and, and mm -hmm. growing but has a kind of constant bass under it. But it's not a, an easy way to do a s song that has like a verse and then modulates into like a different chorus or like kind of lifts in some unexpected way. That's something that you need to kind of write, think about composition to, to mm -hmm. do that easily, I suppose. And... Um, and so I definitely want to keep some of that, but I mean the thing about uh, the thing about the way I work and there's nothing that's really kind of closed off that says I can't do both or I can't mm -hmm. also oh wait a minute I want to like record a I don't know string quartet on this track I'll rent a studio for a day and then bring that recording back to you know my apartment or whatever and, mm -hmm. and mess around with it there. This it's just a, like a really open ended process, so it's just driven by what's exciting me musically at the time, you know, if I want to make a techno record next time, then I'll just stash all the guitars away and, you know, it, 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 I'll just follow kind of my nose as to what I want to do. We moved to an apartment where now I have my own room for music and mm -hmm. then the bedroom next door, so it's just through a wall this time rather than in the same room. Mm -hmm. 